everyone. I'm Jeanette from Co Hong Kong office. Thank you for watching this designer workshop. So I have joined Clo since 2020 and as a designer in Clo, I think creativity is always the key point to deal with the challenge. So throughout the workshop today, I hope you will know how 3D technology can advance our industry and also enjoy how to break through the boundaries with our creativity. So I guess you already know what's the topic of today's workshop. So as you can see this plush toy here. Yep. Today we will go through the basic workflow of making plush toy in Pro. And also I will share some tips to create different light settings for the moody and energizing your night scene. So if you have any questions, just feel free to use the live chat at the side and we will try to answer your questions there. So let's start now. So this is a semi-finished file I have prepared for the design workshop this time. As you can see, to make plush toy in clothes, just like our basic workflow of making garments, prepare the E pattern and the R pattern, and apply sewing. So once we have finished all those steps, we just need to turn on simulation to check out the result. And the plush toy shape looks weird now, so we just need to deactivate the avatar to relax the plush toy shape in more natural looks. And I will also strengthen all the patterns and add pressure to the head and the body parts because it can help to emulate the plush toy shape after filled with uh, stuffing materials. And just turn on simulation to see the result. Yeah, so this part we also need to change the sewing line type because you can see the seam line between head and body parts looks stiff, not natural. So after I have created the base form of the plush toy, next I will use pin tool okay, to adjust the plush toy shape that close to my ideal shape. So I will keep turning on simulation and use gizmo tool to adjust the pin. So as you can see, I can adjust the shapes of the plush toy by using pin tool. Yeah, I can even pull down the prints here to make the plush toy look more cute. So yeah, anyway, I think this is cute enough. And yes, of course, the tails, don't forget the tails. So this is the tricks to use pin tool and this tool to adjust the placement of the pattern or the placement of the shape of the plush part. So now I think it's good enough. So I will freeze the uh, head and the body patterns to maintain the plush toy shape. And the ears, we will need to make it as a double layer. So layer comb under and, and later I will feel the pressure on that part. So as we know, the pressure setting is always positive on the upper layer pattern and set negative on the under layer pattern because this setting can help us create the stuff that looks on both sides. And yeah, don't forget some design details because I have designed some 
um, pattern as a design features on the ear parts. So I will trace out the pattern here and cancel it. Yeah, so finally we have finished the porch toy shape here. And now we can move to the most interesting part, which is supply different materials for the plush toy. So in our core fabric menu, the carpet editor here, we can change different material type for our fabric. For example, our fur, okay, or silk, that kind of fabric. And of course, you can build up your own materials library, just like here. I have created a lilac fur fabric before, and you can see the setting here. We can also do some specific setting for the fur, and even we can choose different fur presets. And of course, we can also change the fur parameters and also the fur shape based on our needs. So once I change it, you can only check the lilac color in 3D window. So if you want to check out the fur results, we need to use our render engine. So after I turn on the interactive render, then you will see the fur result now. So for some details, like uh, the details on the ear parts and the tail. So for that kind of uh, design features, I would like to apply nice materials on it. So just to make it look like a LED decorated. Yeah. Here, change the night and yeah, it looks like a very edgy plush toy here. Great. And yeah, besides the fur texture and also uh, the night texture, we can also apply this fabric on the sole, just like here. And if I turn on render, we can check the fabric texture in more details and realistic way. Great. Okay. So next, let's try to add some trim on it. For example, the eyes, eyebrow, and nose. Okay, I will add those trim as a OBJ because they are the hot object in the scene. So once I load the OBJ trim in Pro, I can use uh, the crew tool to stick those OBJ on the pattern. And of course, we can also change the material type of the OBJ. So here, I would like to change it as a knight. This looks like a LED light, okay. And the other side, I just need to simply copy and paste it. And adjust the uh, placement by the Gizmo tool. And stack it again. And yeah, also the eyes brows. Also, I will add it as a trim and use the crew tool to stick on the pattern. And the material type of plastic would better here. And also, we can change the color of it. And the nose. Just do the same step, just stick on it and change the color. So for our color box here, we can change any colors that we want by a web code or by pantone code. So we can change the color manually. And uh, yes, also the strawberry, I make it for this plush toy before. 
And yeah, maybe Mr. A will go here, but never mind. Just I will just add it back. And for that kind of graphic material, we can also change the color and also the material type, for example, metal for it. Yeah, looks great here. Okay, so now I will add pop stitch on the mouth because I have already finished all those hardware trim. So once we chase the internal one here and then we can add pop stitch here. So we can also customize the top stitch in Project Editor, like the top stitch offset. And also the shape, okay? And yes, of course the color. So for some curved top stitch like here, the mouth part, I will also turn on the curve function. So this function can help us smooth the top stitch shape. And for the overlap the seam, I will need to use the seam line top stitch tool and also change the C offset to bring out the top stitch. Yeah, if we don't change the C offset, the fur will cover the whole top stitch. So here I will check the result on rendering again. So far, I think it is good, but only the eyes and the eyebrows parts may need to pull out a bit more because some fur are popped out on the eyes. Yeah, the, the eyes looks good, but the eyes brown, we also need to yeah, move out a bit more because I don't want the fur pass through the eyes brown. So we need to check on render engine every time to ensure the result is what we want. And here I need to fix it again. Yeah, so next I will add backdrop in the scene. So I also prepare some neon light shade for my backdrop. So here I just need to add it into my project. And now if we go to the uh, night setting, I have turned off the dome light, but out of the IES and the spotlight. So let's turn on the render first and see. Yeah, I think it looks cool now. The environment is dark and the main source may come from the spotlight and the IES night. Okay, so here, as you can see, for those LED trim, we just share the same material, the normal fiber materials. So for those night tube, I will try to add some light materials on it. Yeah, maybe I just add this green first. And this is the one that I said before. This is for the night, okay? Materials in light and in green color. And for the other one, I will try to apply in other night materials, but with different colors. So the tips to create neon light in Pro, make sure you have assigned different color mounts and tone of color on the fabric side and front. For example, this blue neon light, I use white blue at side with 20 color mounts. And front, I use the less saturated blue and higher color mounts value. Because we know that the brightest part of the neon tube is the tube inside and the kind of light will be reflected at the side. Yep, looks fine. So besides the night materials, we can also set different light source in the scene. As you can see, there are many light settings we can use from the weather engine here. For example, the rectangle night, spot night, etc. 
So I will add a spare knight in the scene as an example here. So once we added the spare knight here, we can use this mode tool to adjust the knight source placement. Just imagine this is a real spare knight in the scene. And we can even change the intensity and also the color of the light. And let's see. Uh, yes. Here you can see that's a night shadow because uh, I forgot to turn off the show setting. Yeah. I just need to turn it off. which means uh, only render the night, but not render the night object, okay? So I can adjust the placement of the night here. And also at the same time, you can see some light reflection on the ground in our render engine. Yeah, looks great. So now if I go to the night setting, you can see the scene night source actually is come from the spot night, IES night, and also the spare night. And of course, I will also adjust the finish conditions before I go ahead to the final render. So I will change the night and the texture quality in very high and high because it contains the neonite and fur texture in the scene. And also I will set a longer render time and less noise threshold for the final render. Yeah, so this is the end of the design workshop today. Hope you guys enjoy and see you next time.